Right, good morning. Hey, how are you, brother? Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> what's going on? Not much, not much. Yeah, so what's the uh, lockdown? What's going on? So Thursday morning, we're four days into two-week lockdown. Well, hopefully what is going to be a two-week lockdown. But to close the, the business, close the gym down, and we've decided to move it all down here outdoors to the beach to run group sessions and even open gym for our members to look after them and you know serve them in this time, keep them training, keep them healthy and fit, and even do some breath work down here by the beach and look after mindset as well. At the moment, there's so much fear, uncertainty, etc., and worry going on. I thought the best thing we can do is show up and help our crew as much as we can. So we've been down here since 6 a.m. Monday morning, running like eight, nine classes a day, 6 a.m., 7 a.m., 8 a.m., 9 a.m., 10 a.m., 3 p.m., 4 p.m., 5 p.m. So I feel like I live in the park now. I feel like a homeless guy, um, yeah, lives in the park, but we're making it work and the crew's been really appreciative. So it's been uh, well worth it already. And yeah, the feedback's been great. The guys have been coming down, training hard. Had a little bit of rain to deal with, but we managed to still get it done. So all things are going really well. And we're still, um, yeah, making it work. Do what you gotta do. So Dan, does this uh, bring back any memories? <laughs> it does. That was just saying this is where it all started quite a few years ago now. I think oh, about seven and a half, almost eight years ago, before we had a gym. So we've had ours for yeah almost five, and then previous that we had a smaller facility for three years, and then before that. This is where we were down here. I used to work at Fitness First, doing one-on-one -on -one PT, and then started doing a few outdoor boot camp style sessions down here at the beach. And the cool thing about that is that originally it was me, my wife, who was then my girlfriend back then, and um, I think my brother, cousin, and a friend used to come down. No one was paying for the sessions at that point in time on a Saturday morning. We had no equipment, and then we started to bring a couple other friends down, and then we got like a medicine ball and a kettlebell, and one rope, for example, we'd run sessions there, and then slowly added a bit more equipment, slowly added a few more people, and then it started to get popular and grow, and so we added a couple more sessions, and we did Monday night, Wednesday night, Saturday morning, and then that grew again, doing more sessions, for example, before we knew we had a full, uh, outdoor group training business with a, a client base of about 50, almost 100 people. And that was when I made the decision to open our first gym, uh, yeah, about seven and a half years ago over on Auburn Street here in Wollongong. And then we, uh, yeah, and that started the journey. So it does bring back some pretty cool memories of being down here and a good reminder of the progress that we've made over, yeah, a significant amount of time, the amount of work that's gone into it. But yeah, good times, good memories. So I just put a video up on, on social media. I was in the gym this morning went over to pick up a couple extra plates to get some training done down here. And I made a video talking about what I was doing. I was there in the gym, had access to every single piece of equipment we have in there, world-class training facility to do incredible training. And just like last lockdown when the gym was shut for three months, I chose not to do a single session in the gym and I'm doing the exact same thing this time. The reason for that is it's not just about me. I've got access to the gym too an incredible training facility, but I want to be down here training with our crew, going through this challenging time together. And just a reminder to people that there's more to life than just worrying about ourselves all the time. It's really easy when things are challenging, when there's a bit of fear and uncertainty, etc., to like worry about ourselves, which is fine, and it's, you know, self-care is super important. But if we really want to have a level of fulfillment in life and want to be successful and stuff, there's a lot of credit, a lot of benefit to being able to show up for other people and think about how can we help other people in times of need, how can we serve other people, especially in times like this when there's you know fear and challenge, etc. It's a chance for us to, to step up and really be with the crew rather than go, oh, well, I've got everything I need, I'm going to be fine and worry about myself. So, yeah making the decision not to train the gym at all and be down here in the rain getting it done regardless with our guys with our team and with all of our members as well because that's how i think you know as a leader we want to position ourselves for example and want to make those sorts of choices to be with them rather than separate ourselves and just make sure that we're looked after and leave everybody else to fend for themselves Yeah! Go back, Tata! 
Hi. Alright, we're getting serious today. I went and got my knee sleeves, lifting shoes, and belt. Every day we've been improving our outdoor setup, squat racks first, then we got some lifting platforms and timber for lifting platform for a more solid, stable base to lift from. And it's outdoor, that's it. I'm going all out. I went and got the knee sleeves and the belt <laughs> to try and uh, move a bit more weight around more safely. So let's see how we go. So another thing I think there's a lot of benefit training out here to be able to just train whatever the circumstances might be, but to learn how to be able to train or stick to our goals and keep moving forward regardless of the external circumstances, regardless of everything being perfect. Sometimes if we get caught needing everything to, to be perfect or everything to line up in order to get our training sessions done, stick to our habits, stick to our goals, etc. There's pretty much a guarantee that things aren't always going to be perfect. Things aren't always going to be lined up to create the best environment for us to train, for us to, you know, work towards our goals, whatever they might be in any area of our life as well. So that's why, like, sometimes people will go, oh, I can't train without my headphones. Who gives a fuck about your headphones or about music, for example? We'll train regardless. Or oh, the gyms are shut. Who gives a fuck, like, if you can, you know, find a way to make some sort of progress, work on some weaknesses, whatever it might be. There's opportunity in every situation. We just need to look for it. We need to change the way we look at the situation, look for the opportunity, the growth from it, rather than just let ourselves get down about things not being perfect. When we cultivate that, it means that the outside noise, all that doesn't matter anymore, and we're just on that path working towards what we care about most, regardless of what's going on in the world. Because I guarantee, if you wait for things to be perfect, you're gonna be waiting a very long time, and you constantly have things put you off from achieving what you want. So learn to cultivate a mindset where you don't need things to be perfect to move forward, and you're just resilient enough to keep getting after it. Let's get it. Bush Mechanics 101. <laughs> Alright, so we managed to I think 190 for three. I think it's pretty close to a PB. I think I don't know if I've ever tripled it before, so it might be a PB or, or probably equal to. Um, but I thought some a bit of fire in the belly, you know, I thought I felt alright, so I'd go for those a couple extra reps and just really worked on a big thing for me as well is just feeling that position in terms of as we hit the bottom of the squat, we're trying to keep that weight over the center of our foot, right? We want to stay like dead balanced, especially when, as the weight gets heavier, the more it comes off that center of gravity, that center of mass, the more it's going to pull you forward. If you imagine, I'll use the analogy of like, if you think about a crane, the crane picks up a load, but then it extends out. As it extends out, that leverage or that moment arm is getting greater, so the load is actually almost becoming heavier because of the distance between um, that central point and where the load is as well. So it's the exact same with squatting and deadlifting and stuff. As soon as we move off position, just by a little bit with heavy weight, it can get pretty ugly pretty quick. You see people get stapled. And so as I'm squatting, like a good cue to think about is balance through the feet. So we want even balance between big toe, little toe, and heel. Right, so 33% on each of those points. So it should be centered where all those points. And if sometimes I if I fall forward, and the heels lift up, that's when I know the weight's starting to come forward and that's when we're gonna, you know, fall in some pretty vulnerable or dangerous positions. So the reason I'm saying that is because on that set, on the first rep, I'm like, oh, that felt pretty good. I can feel really well balanced, which is a good sign. So then the second rep, I thought I'd feel confident to go a second rep here. Whereas if I hadn't felt balanced in that first one, I wouldn't have done it. And then same with the second, it felt pretty good. So I was like, all right, I think I've got a third one here in the tank, I can push for it because the position was good, the balance was good. And um, it's why I decided to push for three when the plan was only to go for one. So yeah, a few technical cues to help with your lifting and stuff. Remember how important that balance is in our lifts and those bar pass and stuff, because that can definitely, definitely help us. So 
So we've been running quite a few group sessions down here. We thought, how can we you know, do our best to look after the crew to make sure everyone can get some training in. So we've been doing 6 a.m. group class, 7 a.m. group class, 8 a.m. group class, or sorry, 8 a.m. open gym where the crew can just come down and use the equipment, kettlebells, dumbbells, barbells, lifting platforms, etc., squat stands and do their own training at 8 a.m., 9 a.m., another group class at 10, and another group class at 3, another one at 4, and another one at 5 p.m. So we're running 8, 9, 10 group sessions a day. But the best part about it all is they've been booked out and the feedback from our members has been really, really positive. They really appreciate the effort that me and all the team, because it's definitely not just me by myself, have gone to to make it all happen and yeah, be down here to run all these classes and bring all this equipment down here, etc. So it's been a really nice um, yeah, time in terms of feedback from the, and coming together with our with our members, with our platinum members, our gym members and friends as well. I've tried to reach out to 30, 40, 50 people that I know might have been going through some challenge and invite them down to train. We do have a few free spots in our classes. You can just book in on our Definition Fitness app if you want to come down. But um, yeah, we've got plenty happening and the plan is that if we need to open up even more spots, which we've done, like opened up more classes, etc., to make sure that no one misses out, we'll do that. So yeah, heaps of opportunity to train just trying to encourage everybody to keep the good habits going and now especially more than you know uh, any other time it's like when things can be like greater levels of stress and more more challenge etc I think it's even more important to, to train and look after ourselves so yeah good to rem reminder where we could all right we're in lockdown I'm gonna stress out I'm gonna worry I might just stay home and you know not eat very well drink more alcohol be less active stop training and then start to create a bit of a downward spiral with our physical health but also mental health or the other side of that is choose to go okay what can I do these two weeks to look after myself keep training keep feeding myself with positive information around good people and um, yeah keep those good habits rolling so that's what we're trying to provide for everybody and it's been going really really good so pretty stoked day four it feels like it's day 45 because i've been doing huge days down here and i live in the park now but other than that we're good how have you been feeling during the during the lockdown though start off with stress <laughs> yeah it's been a bit it has been a bit stressful but i think the biggest thing is because we've been through it before and last time we were shut for three months so we had an announcement Saturday afternoon, short notice. We had to close within a few hours, but apparently for two weeks. So it's like, well, we've done it before. We've gotten through it before. We've got an awesome group of members and team to support us through it and work together through it. And um, and the restrictions aren't as strict as what they were initially last time too. So there's been a lot of positives as well. And even like the learnings and growth from last time have served us to help get through this. So been a bit of stress, but nowhere near as bad as the start of last time, which is like March of last year. And um, just another example of how like what we did go through has helped us grow to then handle, you know, more adversity down the track. But just a quick reminder to everyone out there, like if you're in lockdown or regardless, just keep looking after yourself, keep being conscious of the decisions that you're making and the habits you're choosing every day. Because remember that like, you know, those little habits, those little things that we do are what then create our future. Sometimes in short periods of time, they don't matter that much. Like if we're not training, if we're eating heaps of junk, for example, not moving, not looking after our body and our mind, we can get away with it for a little while, but eventually those unhealthier habits will catch up with us and manifest in some way, either be, you know, in disease, in illness, in, you know, more anxiety, depression, these different things that come up. And sometimes if we don't catch it early, it just gets worse and worse and worse over, over time. So just be really conscious of what you're doing, you know, in the day to day and try and build some habits that are really serving you to look after yourself. And I guarantee it's gonna help you in the long term as well, okay? So I look forward to seeing you legends in the next one and take care.